Now, this is the theory that came across my desk a few years ago. I believe I mentioned it in a presentation I did on CERN back in the day, and it has recently come to my mind, and so I wanted to present this to you as I find it interesting how deeply rooted and connected modern organizations are to ancient organizations. The European Organization for Nuclear Research has by some been labeled the New Tower of Babel. Now when you think about how the old kings of the past, the men of renown, wanted to build gates, pyramids, and towers as pathways to and from the heavens or to some other dimension. It's a bit easier to make these connections. Is CERN the door to the abyss? Given the location of the facility, the deities they give reverence to, are they due to rip a hole into another dimension to release an army of destruction upon us you know people who are deep into the occult will do things not knowing if they will work or not but there is this twisted frankensteinian mad scientific part of cern as there was during the creation of atomic weapons are they attempting to resurrect the spirit of nimrod or Gilgamesh, or Osiris, whatever you want to call them. Well, we have to know who Nimrod was and what happened to him. Whether they can open up portals or bring back the Nephilim or not, it's all influenced. And so be it. Nimrod, a figure mentioned in the book of Genesis, and he is described as a great hunter and a powerful king. In the biblical account, Nimrod is listed among the descendants of Noah and is singled out for his might and hunting skills. Or some think he may be a descendant of Cain. The text paints him as a larger than life character, if you know what I mean and who was especially proficient in hunting. And this description is initially seen as complementary. He is referred to as a mighty hunter before Yahweh, suggesting a sense of greatness and excellence in his hunting prowess. Yes, Nimrod and Gilgamesh and Osiris and Orion are all probably the same giant or from the same lineage of giants a different incarnation of the same spirit perhaps some medieval commentators on the biblical text interpreted nimrod's description positively for example some believe that nimrod was blessed by yahweh with exceptional success and greatness and his accomplishments were attributed to a divine intervention that led to his achievements. This positive interpretation led later generations to use Nimrod as a model of success in military endeavors. And they would bless their sons with the hope that they would be as successful as Nimrod. Other biblical commentators acknowledged the positive aspect of Nimrod's description emphasizing Nimrod's greatness and power. Despite the initially positive biblical portrayal of Nimrod as a mighty hunter, later traditions, including writings from the Second Temple period, church fathers, rabbinic midrash, and medieval Islamic literature 
developed a more negative view of him. Nimrod became associated with the Tower of Babel and was seen as a rebel against God. This transformation of Nimrod from a great hunter to a nemesis of God persisted through the centuries in various religious texts and traditions. Of course, because he would have been the king at the time that they were building this tower. According to Genesis 10.10, Nimrod's kingdom included Babel, Erech, Akkad, and other cities in the region. His influence extended north into Assyria, where he is credited with building renowned cities like Nineveh, Rehoboth, Kala, and Resen. Nimrod was the son of Cush. The story of the Tower of Babel set in Shinar, further ties Nimrod to this region's significance in biblical narratives. In the Tower of Babel account, people aim to build a city and a tower that reaches the heavens to make a name for themselves. This aspiration to establish a name aligns with an earlier biblical passage describing divine beings mating with human women resulting in the birth of mighty ones who were men of renown. Nimrod's name and his desire for renown resonate with this theme, leading to the reinterpretation of him as a figure in opposition to Yahweh, seen as a primeval enemy of the divine. Now, what's interesting is although the Quran does not explicitly mention the Tower of Babel or Nimrod's role in Islamic tradition, various extra Quranic sources provide detailed accounts of these narratives. In one of these accounts, Nimrod's relentless pursuit of knowledge about the divine after a debate with Abraham, Nimrod the tyrant decides to build an enormous tower in Babylon intending to ascend it and peer into heaven, attempting to catch a glimpse of the God of Abraham. The tower's height varies in different versions of the narrative, with some claiming it reached astonishing heights, such as 5,000 cubits, which is 1.5 miles, or even two parasings, which is about 7.45 miles. In Islamic literature, Nimrod is portrayed as a symbol of arrogance and tyranny, much like Pharaoh. He embodies the archetype of a boastful ruler who opposes righteousness and represents an unrelenting force of evil. Nimrod's actions include the slaughter of all firstborn males, reminiscent of other biblical stories such as Pharaoh's search for Moses and Herod's pursuit of baby Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Interestingly, Nimrod's eventual demise is attributed to a gnat entering his nostril and gnawing at his brain, <laughs> a fate described in some renditions to span 400 years. This narrative parallel can be found in the well-known Talmudic story of the death of Titus. Then there is the version that Abraham killed Nimrod and beheaded him, or he cut him into pieces, similar to the Osiris story. Or you could call him Marduk if you like. Yes, the same guy with the beard. So we see how Nimrod is connected to the Tower of Babel and if CERN is the new Tower of Babel, we don't really know how Nimrod died. So is this in part some insane attempt to resurrect or release an imprisoned spirit? You know, Nimrod was a mighty hunter. Gilgamesh was known for going out into the wilderness and killing a monster. You know who else has a similar tale? Can you guess?
Apollo. That's why he is depicted holding a bow. Because he went out to slay a monster to protect his mother. And you probably know by now that CERN is partly located on the same ground as the old Temple of Apollo, as some suggest. Well, the part of France where CERN is partially situated is called St. Genus Poly. The name Poly comes from Latin Apollyacum, and it is believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo as the original is in Delphi, Greece. And the people who live there believe that it is a gateway to the underworld. And CERN is built on the same location. If the stories are true and Nimrod or Abaddon is going to be handed the keys to the abyss and CERN is the door, then that is part of prophecy and we can't change that. We can only prepare for it. And that starts with the spirit. That's all for now and there is more to come. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and become a level one member for exclusive content. Also, the Woodward TV store below for new merch. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. I want to thank everyone who has been supporting this channel and there are some exciting things coming up everyone have a great day and as always stay awake stay aware stay safe and i'll talk to you all soon